Okay, back from a live stream where I managed to get one figure. 90% painted, so I guess that's okay. But instead, we just griped about politics, which seems to be what you do when you get a certain age. However, what is this video going to be about? Well, it's going to be about starting a role-playing game. Of course, I got my boonie hat on. Oh, yeah. Should I wear my boonie hat? I don't know. I kind of like this thing, too. This is a face mask. I like to wear it. It's got my uh, Orthodoxy or Death logo on it. And of course, I'm wearing a uh, holy icon of Jesus. Now, let me tell you, if I actually wore this to church, I think Father Nectarius would probably backhand me. But around the house, I guess. It's okay. So I've got my pin. I don't know if this is a great pin or not because it's uh, everything on it. It's written in Japanese except where it says Tombo. My daughter gave me this, but I figured it's a pin. Got a piece of paper. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you stuff you probably already know and uh, or that you could find other channels on YouTube who do it better than I do. So, so there you go. I guess we could bear with me. What if I do that? If I do that, yeah, that makes it little bit better now the camera that's on me is a little bit blurry because uh it's a crappy camera so you know sorry guys i used the good camera to show off my miniature painting and stuff there's a shadow from the cable so i've got this blank piece of paper <clears throat> now i'll show this off again some of you've seen it this is uh the middle portion of Imperial Kellengrad. This is my homebrew game. You've heard me talk about it quite a bit, uh, especially in live streams. We've talked about it, the nature of elves and all this sort of thing. And you can see where not only have I marked the major cities, the major rivers, because there are other rivers here, but like creeks and streams and stuff. I'm not going to mark that because that's crazy. We've got our mountain ranges, our hills. There's even some volcanoes down here and this whole forest around these volcanoes because they've recently uh, went off. The whole forest is just charred trees, you know. Um, so we got the Axfall Mountains and the Razortooth Mountains here. The Witch Mountains in the middle. We've got the northern coast is mostly swamps. And it shows where, if uh, unless otherwise said, humans live everywhere here. So Kalingrad and Musingrad. Chernograd, Chernan, it, it's actually Cherningrad, yeah, Cherningrad. Marsh side is a little village. Uh, this town up here that I constantly forget to name. Hey, put in the comments a good Russian sounding name for this city. Uh, Groznygrad sounds more Polish than uh, Russian. Groznygrad. Uh, but you can see there's gnomes in the Copper Hills here, bullywugs live in the swamps. Stoge and I'll keep, which is where most of my campaigns start. And yes, the name Stoge and I'll keep comes from uh, Stoge and I'll Gate from uh, Ruins of Adventure or Pool of Radiance. I just really like it. And I created a whole back city how uh, Yosef Stoge and I'll, you know, cleared that land and built that keep and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Why am I showing you this? Well, just because you don't need any of this. This is, this is. This and the rest of the map is what happened over the course of a decade of playing the game. I'm going to tell you, there's two two copies because my copying machine is crazy. I'll tell it to copy something. It won't copy it. Uh, I'll turn the computer off and go to bed. I'll wake up the next morning. I'll turn the computer on and it will copy. It. This is what you need to start. And this is how uh, I do it, right? So I got my pen that my beautiful daughter gave me, and I got this thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is in the center of this piece of paper, I'm just going to draw a key. That's all you need. It don't have to be anything. And if you want to use incarnate or something, that's that's just as well. And the one thing you need somewhere within a day's travel to keep, if not directly by the keep, is you're going to need a little village, right? So right there, boom, we've got a keep, and we've got our village. And if you want to make it a slightly bigger village, you know, 
add a couple of more rooftops to it, whatever. And here's our road. <clears throat> All right. So, oh, I got somebody's here. So, the village I'm going to call Taylor Town. Did I spell Taylor Town wrong? Maybe. So I've got Taylor Town, and we're going to call this Eagle. Okay, I spelled Eagle wrong. Let's throw a, a G where it should be Eagle T. So this is where the villagers are going to start, and we, we're going to have the road. And I'll just say the road goes this way, and it goes this way, right? Now, if you want there to be a coastline, you could throw a coastline. Like I could say, boom, here's the coastline. There's a coastline up here, right? The coast. Okay. One thing you're going to need around your, your starting area, I think, is a river. So let's go ahead and just draw a river. Now, none of this that I'm showing you is, is super groundbreaking at all. You guys probably already know. So we've got our river, right? And, you know, you can kind of draw it out like that so that, hey, it looks more rivery instead of just a, a black line. And we can name our river something. Like what comes to mind for me? I'm going to call my river the Snakehead River. After infamous fish that are just running amok right now in a lot of places here in the US. So, uh, yeah, there we go. You can hear my puppy just freaking out because my friend come over. So this is the Snakehead River. And we'll say that this river is full of giant, aggressive fish. Snakeheads. If you don't know what a snakehead fish is, look it up. It's a terrifying thing. And now, if you want, because this is a fantasy world, we'll say that these things get about eight feet long. Right. Uh, I'm going to draw a little line here. And this denotes that there is a bridge. Here, right. So, easy peasy, right? You guys have probably looked at this. And you're like, well, Phantom, calm down. You're like seven minutes in. Uh, you haven't really showed me anything. What's the deal, DM James? What are you doing, right? Well, here's the deal, right? You start out here. You've got the keep, relatively small keep, maybe 30 soldiers and various administrators and the, the actual family that owns it. You've got Taylor Town, which is uh, obviously you could name it whatever you want. And maybe it's got a 150 population, mostly craftsmen that service the keep. So, you know, armorers, smiths. Uh, coopers, uh, leather workers, etc. You've got the east-west road over this uh, river. You've got the coast, let's say in inches a day's travel, so a good four days away to the north, and nothing else. Well, <clears throat> this is how I like to set up my campaigns, right? So let's say a day's travel down the... Uh, about a day's travel down the, the uh, river here, right? We're going to mark that this there is a ruin here. And I'll just use that. Not a, a ruin, right? And we might say that there's monsters in the ruin, bandits, whatever. Uh, we'll say that this forest from Taylortown heading to the east passes through an incredibly big dark forest right a very scary forest let's just say that I mean, unless you want your forest to be like super cool and everything's chill there as soon as you walk into the forest some wood elves pop out and start handing you lollipops and whatever and then because it is a forest uh let's say that within the forest lives in here well you could say that there is an elf village here and you could mark your little elf village you know make it a little different if you want and say elf village yeah and this becomes your second 
adventure node. So here's adventure node one. Here's adventure node two. And now heading to the east, we could say between the coast and the road, there's a bunch of hills, right? And in this case, I'll just mark the hills off like this. Instead of drawing actual hills, I'll just show that there's, uh, what do you call that? Like e elevation lines. So that, you know, the land jumps up and you, you can make up your own, like what each line equals. But suffice to say, each of these shapes is a hill and the areas between them are draws and uh, valleys and whatever like that so you've got this ridge here and i think we'll call it um uh, we'll call it copper ridge uh copper ridge right and what i'm doing is i'm laying out adventure nodes right so you see how the road goes here and we'll say that there's a trail the dotted lines equal trail, let's say. We're just doing whatever we're doing. And it leads up here. And then we're going to say right here is a dwarf village, right? Because we're playing a fantasy role playing game. And that's going to be number three. And we'll call this, uh, we'll just call this Copper Tower. And maybe that's all they do. They just mine copper. And then trade the copper with the humans. So there's node three. Three nodes are enough for me to start with what I'm trying to explain as far as how I do role-playing uh, is setting up a campaign. Now we've got this whole planes here. Uh, it looks kind of uh, whatever. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out an area here. My, like I said, a friend is over and my puppy is like, rah, rah, rah. and we're just going to mark it out a little bit like this you don't gotta get crazy again you could use incarnate you can make this map much better uh you could say that the scale is one inches uh you know a day's travel or maybe uh maybe let's do something like <clears throat> while i'm thinking about it uh one inch is five miles was five miles and that means that this map, because it's an eight by 11, right? Uh, is going to be 40 miles across and around 55 miles north and south. That's, believe it or not, not a bad thing. It allows your adventurers to walk five miles to this ruin adventure and then walk the five miles back to the tower to rest. Uh, that is a good thing when you have new starting players. And because I've done what I've done here, uh, I'm going to call this uh, the Black Swamp. They're having a conversation between Poblanos and, right? So we've got the Snakehead River, the Black Swamp. And I think what I'll do is I'll say. See, the Elf Village, there's no trail to it. They, they don't like you. But I'll say that there is a trail that leads down here and right here. There is a town. It's a human town. That's going to be our node number four, adventure node number four, and we'll call it Swamp Watch Village. Right. We'll just start Swamp Watch. And we'll say that the people of Swamp Watch, they survive by farming and stuff, but really their main thing is they sift through the swamp for amber, which they can then sell. You know, So people in Swamp Watch, they really live a feast or famine situation. If they get lucky and they find a bunch of amber, then they got tons of money to spend for a little while. Uh, but if they go for a while without finding any fresh amber, Ah, then they're in trouble, right? Then they're having problems. Uh, just to go ahead and finish some stuff off, we can go ahead and draw these hills in a little bit better. 
showing which, you know, by uh, elevation lines, which ones are bigger or whatever. You don't got to do this. This is all just stuff you could do. At this scale, it makes more sense to me to do hills this way. Whereas at a larger scale, uh, who cares about at where every individual hill is? So now uh, we've got our things here. <clears throat> All right. Now, why do I worry about setting up these nodes of civilization? Or, or some people would call it points of light in the darkness. Because you can then set adventures within a day's travel or so around each node. And... Um, so the swamp knot watch node right you can say about 10 miles into the node there's an ancient burial ground right like a set of burrows that poke up above the actual surrounding swamp and you can say that there's an actual dungeon there and you could code it uh four dash a let's say and you could also say that way down here somewhere in the swamp, there's a Bullywug village. And we could mark that with some other thing to show that, you know, and we could call that 4 B. Right. Bullywug village. Bullywugs. Completely underutilized monsters. Uh, very much superior, I think, to just random generic orcs all the time. Uh, you know, having a, a bunch of Bullywood villages in the Black Swamp unite to attack Swamp Watch, I think that's a really awesome thing. And then maybe up here, we'll draw like a, a rickety looking tree. Right? Like a dead tree in the middle of the swamp, you know, surrounded by bogs and moors and stuff and we can call this the hag's tree right and you could say that there are a coven of hags that actually live there and if you treat with them maybe you can uh maybe they'll cut you a deal but they're always going to try to betray you in the end or maybe they'll just eat you you never really know with these hags right but there is a coven of three evil hags that live in the in the uh, in the swamp area. Then uh, let's go ahead and put a little forest here, and we'll call this the dim wood, which is uh, uh, the name of uh, the major forest in my homebrew, and we'll call this the green wood. And if you want to separate, you could call it the Southern Greenwood and the Northern Greenwood, right? Now, um, so we've already done, it looks like, uh, three adventure nodes around, or three adventure sites around node four. Uh, one, we've got, okay, 1A. 1A, the ruins. You know, and when they're in the taverns, they'll hear tell of ancient ruins to the south along the river. Um, adventurers who go there rarely come back, but the few that have come back hauling just um, sacks full of gold and treasure, blah, blah, blah. And you could put bandits in there, humanoid tribes, or just a random dungeon where, uh, you know, you just literally create a dungeon and just use the wandering monster charts to or random monster charts to uh, stock it out. Uh, over here in the north, let's say there's a, <clears throat> we'll just mark it like this because this is very classic. Okay. And we'll say in the north, spider drew. That's right. There's a group of druids devoted to a spider goddess. And since it's within the forest, we'll call this node uh, 2A. And not only do they raise, feed, whatever giant spiders, 
but they mingled their DNA with the giant spiders. And now some of them have become adder cops or spider folk, right? Um, then let's say south of the elf village, um, we'll draw a couple of hills here. We'll say that the elf village is just north of a couple of hills within the forest. Uh, you know, you could call them whatever. Um, well, since it looks like there's going to be three peaks to these hills, perhaps we would call these the Three Sisters Hills. So we got Three Sisters. That's what the elves call them. Three Sisters, right? <laughs> and then if we wanted to, we could mark a cave here. And that would be 2-B. And we could say that this cave is uh, maybe full of evil humanoids, maybe an ancient temple, something like that. And then another thing we could do away from the elf village is we could draw an opening right here in the forest, the road. And then we're going to draw a village, except this village it's not an adventuring node. No, it's adventuring site. And we'll call this 2 C. And we'll say this is uh, Woodman Village. Right? Werewolves. It, they. Pass is a, a village of simple woodsmen that, uh, you know, sell lumber and various other things from the forest, venison and whatnot. But in secrecy, they, they worship a wolf god and the higher up members of the cult of the wolf are in fact werewolves. Uh, chaotic evil who like to, in their wolf forms, run about the forest eating things, right? And maybe the elves need some help with that. They don't know that the wood werewolves are from the, the, the Woodman Village. But perhaps an elf shows up in Taylortown. And he's like, you know, our, our village is constantly being attacked by these werewolves. We went to the Woodsman Village. They, they said they would help, but so far nothing's helping. Can you, you know, can you help us out here, right? Um, and then north of Tilverton, or Taylorton and Eagle Keep, uh, we could go a little bit north up here, and we could say that there is, <clears throat> I don't know, what do we want to put here? The Old Mill, right? We'll just draw something that looks kind of like a mill. We'll call, call that 1-B, the Old Mill. And then what people don't know about the old mill, which has been abandoned for a very long time, is that it's either haunted or there's a dungeon underneath, you know, caves or something like that. Uh, it's just an unsafe place to go. Now we go over here to the dwarf area. Uh, the dwarf area could be really cool. Uh, just based on what I've drawn, let me grab a hold of this and also move this. Come on. Yeah, the great cable. What are you trying to do? And not the cool cable from the comics, but so we got the coast. Let's say the trail continues on past the dwarven place to the coast, and we'll draw a village here. But again, this village is not a, a node. Nodes are safe areas where the adventurers should be able to uh, buy new equipment find training to level up, whatever. No, this area we'll call Red Hook, right? And Red Hook has a secret. Now this is uh, 3-A. And the secret of Red Hook is that all of the wealthiest members of Red Hook are members of the cult of Dagon. And they routinely uh, breed their own daughters with a group of Sahagan that live off the coast or deep ones, whatever you want to call them. 
and that is uh an issue they uh they they constantly do very well when it comes to collecting fish but they're very secretive and they do not like visitors as a matter of fact any women folk who uh show up there they might even try to kidnap them and force them to reproduce with the uh the... so all in all incredibly horrible place right and then since we're in the hills hills are awesome because we can draw just cave anywhere we want really and this would become uh 3d and we could say that a relatively large tribe of bugbears live here. And if we wanted to draw another cave on this same hill, now we're just having a problem. This hillside is just not a good place to be, right? And we could say orcs live here. You know, let's we've been a little bit uh so that's three dash C, right? And then and Dan. Maybe down here by the road, we'll draw a little thing on this hillside and we'll say bandits. My brain works too fast for my hands and I skip words when I'm trying to write. So is there anything else we want to do? Well, we could say that the trail leads along the river to the north. And then we could say you could cross there and let's add one more adventure site, right? Right up here, we'll just mark it with like a... Some swords like that, right? And we'll call this the bone fields. And we'll say that there was a massive battle here in the past. And to this day, sometimes the dead rise up. It's very dangerous, but you have to go down that road if you want to get to the next uh, town or city, which I will just call city. So then the next thing I would do, now that I've got these adventure sites, is I would go ahead and flesh out the village, a couple of NPCs that are important in each village. Uh, you don't gotta get crazy, you don't have 50 NPCs per village, you know, basically the people you think that your players are definitely gonna interact with, and then a couple extras, you know, uh, just to be ready for it. Then you could do your adventures, okay? We know over here at 2B is, uh, what did we say lived in that cave again? Hell, I forget now. Because this over here is 2C. Well, you do a little village and you figure out which villagers are just villagers, uh, which villagers are actually werewolves. And then the spider druids, you might draw an area in the forest and denote where the spiders actually live, where the adder cops have made their little village. Uh, maybe they've created a shrine, you know, around a wicked tree that they hang skulls and stuff off of. The whole nine yards like that, right? Even maybe they're making their own homes. Their shelters are made out of the hides of the different humans and humanoids and animals that they feed upon uh, with the webbing and all that. So you got that idea there. Uh, yeah, 2B could be whatever you want. It could be one whatever, uh, ancient whatever. It's just near the Elf Village and they, somebody has a rumor about like they have a map. Uh, so dungeon, dungeon of your choice. Excuse me for spitting. Then the Bullywood Village, pretty easy, you know, you draw up however you feel like your Bullywood Village would be, whether it's in caves that are partially submerged or they actually build huts on drier land, up to you. Figure out how many Bullywugs live there. And then, uh, you know, for every 10 Bullywugs, you might have a couple of uh, podlings, you know, very young Bullywugs. And, and for every 10 Bullywugs, you might have a leader type and then for every 10 leader types, you would, might have your chieftain, who could be like a very powerful bully you know, Maybe the equivalent of a fifth or sixth level fighter. And as such, you might want to give him, you know, some kind of magic item. These burrows over here, well, they could lead to a mega dungeon set in the middle of a swamp. Um, or they could just be your typical 
undead infested ancient burial site in the middle of the swamp ancient kingdom hags are pretty easy you know like when i use this i actually just drew the outline of the tree like the outside of the tree right like this and of course i'm just using paper so there's no scale here but then what i did is i i i did like this the tree of course is hollow right and and they made a door a very nice door here uh painted green and then on the inside they would have like their bed area you know and they had like uh, you know they had built like a uh an iron stove that they did their cooking on and there was a cauldron next to it that i drew you know and then over here they had built like a wall with the door <clears throat> and that was kind of like a pantry area you know and you gotta put the three beds too there's three of them and they call each other sister all the time so they've got their three beds in here and uh this over here was like the pantry or the larder they're in there figuring out what we're going to eat tonight and then over here there there might be a table let's say and it's full of like all kinds of different herbs and magic stuff so on the exterior from any direction it just looks like a big gnarly twisted tree uh that's like you know 20 or 30 feet across but then if you look around you know say there's brush here bushes and stuff but if you really poke around then you find this quaint little green painted door leading into the thing you know like an archway and you've got this door that's set in there if you knock on it well the hags are in there. but maybe sometimes they're not in there maybe you go in there and they're not home and you're rooting around and then you're halfway through rooting around and they come back because they've been out in the swamp doing whatever hags do yeah. and then up here we've already talked about this so your players start here at level one or two i mean whatever you do and all you would do is there's a there's a tavern in taylor town and maybe an adventurer's guild or something maybe if it's big enough for that and while they talk to the different npcs you've come up with you know the tavern keeper the serving wage the weapon shop owner whatever the town mayor even uh, you know they might hear rumors huh it's in the pantry the other one was empty yeah, the new garlic's in the pantry. Um, so then you can make these level appropriate. And that's really the big reason I do this. I don't ever railroad players into an adventure. I just give them rumors. Oh, I heard the old mill was haunted. Or, hey, I, the ruins to the south are said to be full of whatever. Or, oh, the people at Swamp Watch have been having a really hard time lately with bully lugs. Oh, the dwarves of Coppertown keep complaining about being raided by bugbears or the merchant says yeah we've been having a hard time on the western road there's bandits in the hills you guys you understand what i'm saying right or you know an elf envoy shows up and says we're having a hard time here you know a hunter comes back and talks about barely escaping these twisted spider people in the forest you know you get what i'm saying right and then the players choose where they want to go and as long as you don't devote too much time and effort into each adventure site, you just come up with an outline of what's basically there, then you can adjust that on the fly to make an interesting and exciting adventure for the players, no matter what level they are. So this is an evergreen adventure area. If the adventures are level one and they say, okay, we go to the mines, we go we say screw it and we just leave we fight some bandits and we go over here and then they manage to get level six and for whatever reason they come back through taylor town and they hear that oh the old mill is haunted now the old mill could be a level six adventure uh because you already decided that there was a crypt or something under it it's haunted by some kind of undead right so now instead of skeletons and zombies and maybe a low in a low level necromancer now maybe the old mill is haunted by a specter or a wraith you see what i mean 
uh, maybe that bug bear, bear tribe instead of being, you know, four to six bug bears and a couple of slaves. Well, at this point, now there's a lot of them. Maybe that, that cavern goes deep. And the same with the orcs. You see what I mean? So by doing a general overview of an adventure area and just saying, okay, there's X amount elves here, uh, Woodman Village, there's werewolves here, spiders here, you know, I'm going over again. Undead in these borrow mounds, some hags, some bully wolves. Obviously, the hags are going to be a threat. If you're first level and you go chasing the hags, uh, well, prepare to reroll character. Then. And then on top of that, you've got basically uh, one, two, three, maybe four, five, six encounter areas. So if you want to do like wandering monsters, you know, you pick your area, say uh, Copper Ridge, right? Copper Ridge. And how I would do that is I would say Copper Ridge, and then I would go one through two, three through four, five through six, and then I would do like six or eight, uh, you know, monsters that are appropriate to the Copper Ridge area. So basically hills. And make sure some of them are actually beneficial encounters. So uh, maybe if they roll a one, two, and then a three, uh, it's gnomes, you know? A group of gnomes are out adventuring around and uh, they see the players and they're like, hey, what's up? And, and the players, unless they're complete and total assholes, right? Uh, they can actually have uh, a very positive reactions with these gnomes and uh, maybe hire some of them for henchmen or maybe one of the gnomes is a powerful warrior that could offer training uh i like to use the training rules in my dnd campaigns etc so there you go that's a another updated dm james how i set up a campaign and the most important thing i want to argue with here is at no time are you railroaded anywhere I do not like when players are railroaded. I like the story to emerge from the choices the players make. So you create a page full of opportunities. Uh, you do some basic detailing of different adventure sites. You create a couple of random monster charts for the regions on your page. And then you just run with it. And, and honestly, if you do it the way I'm describing, the way I've learned over 30 something years to do uh you're you're going to find that running D, D is easy it's just easy because you've switched most of the work from you to the players they're the ones that have to make all the big decisions they're the ones that are really uh, pushing the adventure on uh whereas if you want to be a more of a railroady kind of uh, amusement park let's say dm well, I mean, one, I don't like that style of play, but two, you, you're putting all the work on you because you have to be so concerned with every detail of your story. And then you have to try to find a way to get the players to buy into it, right? With this style of running a game, uh, you've created the, the, you've set the stage, the players are the actors, and... Uh, <clears throat> And it just works, guys. It just works. So all that said, I'm going to go ahead and end this, get it uploaded. If you liked it, well, like it, man. Like, subscribe, uh, talk, tell me how pretty I am, and uh, all that sort of things. Uh, if you want to run a game of D&D &D, uh, and you want to copy this, we'll copy it or do your own thing, but based on what I did and uh any other questions you have got now like i said this is stuff i think most of the people who watch my channel already know uh but there are some young bros coming up with dreams of dungeon mastering in their eyes and uh and if i can help you by showing how i do it win-win right so Ending it as I always do, like, subscribe, share it around, tell all your friends that DM James is the best DM ever uh, and how much you love me and I'm, how manly I am. 
how one day you wish uh you know someone like me would marry your daughters all that sort of thing that that makes me feel warm and fuzzy right uh two uh peace and love be sure to hit the gym you know try and get your workouts in uh say your prayers go to mass and uh just let's all work together to be not only better dms but better people catch you in the next one